Sergio e mi dicono che Sax è collegato. Vediamo se. Uh, hi Jeffrey, this is Ramondo. Are you, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, I, yes, I'm here. I apologize. It was a, a long night over here. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. We are really, really struggling to know more uh, about the, the last results, but we think that it's not easy to, to find uh, you know, the final uh, solution. We started this morning um, uh, guessing whether the, the votes that will come by post will be really the uh the you know what will decide the final uh what is your opinion about it was what is your forecast if you can give a forecast or please tell us what is your feeling at least well my feeling is uh, of course uh, very high uncertainty because it's not finished uh but uh, trump uh, certainly completely outperformed uh, all of the opinion surveys Uh, no matter what happens, again, we saw uh, Trump uh, receive several percent more throughout uh, large parts of the country than the opinion polls. Uh, the Democrats uh, did not uh, take the Senate. Um, it's been, a, from my point of view, a horrible election. Uh, but uh, if Trump wins almost unimaginably bad for uh, the United States and very, very difficult for, for the world. Uh, so, but I think uh, I, I know no more than uh, what uh, I'm reading uh, it, it, in, uh, uh, on the wires uh, than, than you see. Uh, there's still a chance for Biden, uh, definitely, uh, but it's going to be a tiny margin, um, if so. Uh, but politically, This country is so divided so deeply, I find it very hard to understand uh, my country, uh, and I find it very uh, depressing, extremely depressing. Uh, we can understand. You, you, you have put your names, your science, and your articles uh, during the last two or three years uh, explicitly saying that uh, USA needs a U-turn in terms of climate policy, in terms of green economy, in terms of social economy. And uh, it seems obvious, I mean, for us Europeans, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's not easy to understand the, the, the decisions and the feeling about the population that had maybe fears or, or, or where communication is very important. What Can I ask you something? Our perception is that Climate and green economy were not enough part of the debate in the last uh, campaign and in the last uh, weeks. At least we, we have not seen the climate issues uh, being part of the priority in the agenda of both candidates. Is it, is it a good yeah. perception? There was very little substance uh, in this debate. Uh, and on the one uh, point that was mostly discussed, the pandemic, where Trump's uh, irresponsibility has left uh, 230,000 people dead, it didn't matter. Uh, but we did not discuss health care, social policy, climate, uh, and uh, probably uh, Biden's uh, one statement in the third debate that the U.S. would transition from oil probably cost him votes Uh, in uh, a number of states uh, and probably uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, which is uh, a key swing state right now in these last hours. So there's no movement in this country uh, that has uh, strong resonance. Most Americans say that climate change is real and serious, but it doesn't change the vote. Uh, this is a, this is what's incredible. There's My country does not uh, have a substantive agenda right now uh, other than uh, really, I would say, uh, white working class rage, which Trump expresses. Uh, but the country is not prepared to deal with any complex issue, whether even, of course, whether it's uh, the pandemic Uh, or an issue like the energy system uh, or healthcare. We can't solve any problems in this country. Uh, 
and uh, this has been like this for years. But every four years, I have hoped for the last quarter century that uh, this country would awake. But again, maybe Biden will win by a sliver of a vote and I'll feel much better uh, in, in a day. But I'm very, very depressed that uh, at best we're divided down the middle. And at worst, we have uh, a person who is uh, absolutely the most vile human being ever to be president reelected after all his vileness and despite a pandemic. So it's really uh, very shocking and disturbing. Look, all of our countries have had horrible leaders at times, uh, but it's especially depressing when uh, the vileness has been on display for many years and then the people vote the same way uh, dividing the country down the middle. It's, it's truly hard to understand, even though I study it every day. I can't say that I uh, um, emotionally understand it. Uh, we, we understand your, your sadness and uh, we, we, we understand that. We, we would like to give some hope uh, thinking about the uh, unilateralism. We, we, we saw that Uh, in spite of different climate policies, the, 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 the American states, the cities, the communities, the, 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 the companies and some of the industries had a, they, they had a very important turn towards decarbonization. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's incredible to see that today is officially the day where USA will go away from the Paris Agreement. Exactly. This, is the, this is something that makes the whole picture <laughs> dramatic. Uh, but at the same time, when we see California, when we see a lot of green industries, um, we see that uh, maybe we should not depend for climate issues on having big, only big agreements at national level or multinational level. There can be uh, uh, unilateral initiatives that can give good results. What is your feeling about this? I'm, I'm somewhat pessimistic about that. And, and the reason is that... Um, The big results we need in the world are decisive changes in China, India, Russia, Saudi Arabia, of course, the U.S. And uh, even if we have considerable uh, action uh, just by the fact that renewable energy is uh, clean and cheap, uh, even if we have that happening, which it is happening in the United States, and even if we have companies like Tesla which are very good companies uh, producing uh, good products, uh, we won't get the kind of uh, major global change unless we have high level global commitment. And the last few weeks have been very good for this. Uh, the European Green Deal, China's commitment to reach net zero by 2060, uh, Japan and Korea, each making a commitment to net zero by 2050 have been very important. But uh, if the United States uh, government, if Trump is reelected, so everything depends on, on this, but if Trump is reelected and the U.S. Uh, continues to be a hostile force, that will uh, also spur hostility, certainly in Saudi Arabia, in Russia. Uh, it will slow any action in Canada and Australia. It will definitely make diplomacy harder with India, which is more interested in its conflict with China than it is uh, with its energy policy. A lot will depend on Europe. Uh, just suppose, I hate to do it, but suppose that Trump is still in office. Will Europe hold together on the European Green Deal, because even within Europe, uh, Poland, uh, Hungary, uh, other uh, Central European countries, even though they have little coal, they resist this agenda, uh, the Czech Republic. And so even Europe would be slowed down uh, diplomatically. If Europe were strong, united, uh, I think the United States could be marginalized, which is what it deserves to be, uh, because this is a dangerous country under Trump, really a dangerous country. But the I truth mean, is, 
Uh, the, the truth is Europe itself is divided and Trump has his supporters in Europe uh, and he will play on them and he will try to divide and weaken Europe or try to bring Europe into a Cold War with China uh, because that is a deliberate U.S. attempt. So I'm sorry to say it. I'm, uh, I do not believe uh, if Trump is president that the world is safe. We don't know. Maybe in, I tell you in 12 hours, I may feel much better when the rest of the ballots are counted. But uh, if Trump is president, the world is not safe. So it, it will take 12 hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it depends on the state, but we'll know a lot more in the next 12 hours. Basically, uh, Michigan and, and uh, Pennsylvania remain. Michigan is my home state. Uh, it's extremely uh, shocking to me to see this behavior. Uh, and Pennsylvania, uh, it, it's probably the divided state and probably Trump's, uh, I'm sorry, Biden's message uh, to uh, move away from oil played a role uh, in making that vote so close. But in general, this is a race vote uh, more than anything, I, th I think. We'll, we'll okay. see the analysis uh, in, in the future. Okay, I remember last year in the same conference of the States General in Economy, you told us something very inspiring. You told us that Europe and China could take the leadership uh, on green economy. And, what, and, and as you said, Europe has done it with the Green Deal and Italy wants to be uh, a locomotive in this. Uh, we are working for that and we are pushing the Italian government who is giving good signs. Um, and today in our conference, we have seen the commitment of China of 2060, carbon neutrality. Uh, do you, I think you, you, you have taken this very positively with a very good uh, appreciation. What about the 2030 target of China of starting reducing the emissions only in 2030, especially the coal emission? Do you think is it, is it enough or shall we push Uh, as Europeans for doing it before in somehow push means agree, talk to them, try to establish connections and industrial uh, links. What do you think about this 2030 peak? Yeah, yeah. What, what has happened is uh, very much a result of uh, EU China diplomacy, even China's commitment to uh, net zero in 2060, I believe, was prompted by Europe. Uh, and specifically by the European-China dialogue, uh, where uh, the European leaders pressed China to come up with this, and, uh, and President Xi did come up with it. So it is a demonstration of European leadership. I've been saying uh, all along that 2060 is an important commitment, but China should do it faster and can do it faster. Uh, and... Uh, Of course, uh, again, a lot depends on uh, the next uh, 24 hours in the United States or the next 12 hours. But Europe should now uh, work with China and Italy could be a big positive force to say, let's work together on our mutual commitments uh, to see how we can accelerate because next year is the start of China's five-year plan, the 14th plan. So a tremendous amount is at stake in the next few months so that the 14th plan is as green as possible. China should not wait. It makes no sense to continue to build coal-fired power plants. Uh, many Chinese uh, officials know better. Uh, it's like the lobby that we all face in the US, uh, Europe, uh, and China. It's about short-term power politics, not about the energy system or the climate. So I think that all of this should be uh, continued to push at a very high level. If the U.S. Uh, stays under Trump, Europe will be absolutely the uh, hope for the world in uh, getting climate safety. Uh, without Europe uh, coherent and strong, there won't be a chance in the world. Uh, it will be a major effort, but Europe will be the decisive force because Europe is the part of the world that knows best, cares the most, uh, has the uh, most ambitious plans, 
and needs to convince the rest of the world uh, to act. And I would take seriously China's commitment as a very positive thing, but I would say it's good, but don't build coal plants now. Stop. It makes no sense. This is absolutely the most basic point. The second point I would say, if I were in Europe's situation, is let's work together on the Belt and Road Initiative. But it must be a green, clean Belt and Road Initiative. If I were uh, in European shoes and if Trump is reelected, I would absolutely work towards strong European Chinese diplomacy because the United States will be the most dangerous country in the world if it's Trump, not the great NATO ally to uh, create a, a block against China. That's absurd. Uh, it will be a danger to ourselves in this country and to the world because it is against uh, all sensible things under Trump. And so we need to watch in the next uh, day or so, but Europe's gonna have a major responsibility in this. On the specific question you asked, it does not make sense for China to wait until 2030. That's just soft politics because of domestic lobbying in China. China should stop the coal plants, it should stop coal on the Belt and Road Initiative. And Europe has one major carrot to offer, which is strong cooperation on the Belt and Road Initiative in return for a real breakthrough that stops coal now and puts the target to 2050 and builds it into the 14th plan, because that's possible and that's really what should be done. Thanks very much, Jeff. We are really honored that uh, you have been here with us so early in the morning and not uh, in this very difficult day and night. I, I must imagine that you have not slept. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's been a very, very long night. <laughs> so I'm so going to... Great. Yes, please. Go ahead. No, no, no. Let's, let's hope for the best. I hope that it's not just my exhaustion and uh, my uh, despair that uh, is overdoing it. Uh, but... Um, just to say thank you very much, Italy can play an extremely important role. It's playing a very important role within Europe, and Europe in any event is decisive for the world right now. The U.S. is too divided and uh, too nasty and too unprincipled uh, to be uh, a trusted partner right now, so we really need Europe. You know, the final word is never said, so uh, let's, let's see. Thanks very much, Jeff. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much.